Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all See you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. It cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, you all here this morning. I know everybody had to lose an hour of sleep to be here, so we're grateful to have you here today. If you are a young person and uh, leaving for Sunday school, Donna's going to meet you in the back right now. Um, whether you've been worshiping with us for a long time, maybe joining us for the first time, uh, or uh, uh, maybe you're following us online, it's great to have you here today. We got a couple big things coming up, and uh, Pastor Erica, you wanted to just tell us about Trivia Night. Um, one of our fundraisers for our Alaskan mission trip is going to be a trivia night on April 28th. It's the last Friday in April. It happens to be National Superhero Day, so we're having a super trivia and encourage you to 
uh, dress up as your favorite superhero. Um, it's $150 for a table of eight or $20 to participate. Um, if you want to join a table, you can contact me with either. We're also looking for um, auction, silent auction items. And um, if you'd like to sponsor a table, let us know. It's middle school and above can have tables. There's no alcohol because we're having it here um, on our site. We encourage you to bring your own food. We will have drinks. Um, and it's just going to be a fun, fun night as a fundraiser for our youth. Um, the next thing is there's a program called Feed the Need. Um, our youth actually participated in this when we were up in Chicago through Feed My Starving Children. And they have remote sites that they set up. And our dog group is actually going to be participating in this, but I'm inviting the entire congregation. Um, I think it's at Queenie Park, but as soon as I say that, I'm wrong. Um, I'll be sending out a, an email about this, but you basically go and you form a team, and you will be adding different nutrients and food things to a package that gets sealed, and they send those all across the world. Um, and they're trying to get 3,000 participants for this whole weekend. Um, we're going on Sunday, April 16th. I have signed our church up for so many slots from 1 to 3.15. If anybody would like to do five years old and up, they also have positions where you can sit and work. So if you are interested, please let me know. Um, I have 40 slots for our dog group and for others. Um, you may also, I, I'm going to put the website on there, and you can sign up as a family on your own if that Sunday afternoon does not work for you. It was a lot of fun. The youth really enjoyed it. It's very organized, and um, you get a lot done. So um, look for that this week, and consider coming out and helping to feed the need. Well, Holy Week is coming up. It's the very, very first full week of April, so I want to just run through uh, what's going to be happening that week. It'll all start off with Palm Sunday, um, and that is the last Sunday of uh, March. Um, and then that e or, no, excuse me, it's April 2nd. It's the first Sunday of April 2nd. So on, on April 2nd, Palm Sunday, and that's the, uh, our next soup supper is going to be that day as well, too. Going to start serving at 5.30. Uh, we had a wonderful time this past week. Had about 120 people there. Had wonderful soup together, all Panera bread soup, and then we did a wonderful mission. Um, afterwards, we put together a hundred, more than a hundred uh, homeless kits, um, and they all have food cards in them. And so uh, a lot of the participants took them home, but we have some extra, and uh, those are going to be, if you weren't able to make it that night, those are going to be available for you to pick up. They're to have in your car with you, you know, come up to an intersection, um, uh, it's something tangible to be able to give out, in, including a meal, um, on us. And so the next one's going to be on uh, uh, April the 2nd. Uh, if it makes a difference, this, we're going to be serving Panera uh, chicken noodle, uh, creamy tomato, and uh, uh, we will be reprising um, broccoli cheddar. That's a big fan favorite. So it's going to start serving at 5.30. And then on uh, that same week, on Thursday, we'll be having Monday, Thursday service. We're going to, we, we talked to Eric, Pastor Eric and I talked about it. We're going to do, for those of you who can't make to the service itself, maybe you're coming home from work, have some other obligations that night, we're going to be uh, offering drive-through communion from 5.30 to 6.30. And then the service is going to be, itself is going to be at 7 o'clock. Then we're back here again the next night uh, for Good Friday. That'll be at 7 p.m. as well. Um, and uh, 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 I, I know I say some version of this every year, but it's hard for me personally to experience the joy of Easter without going through Good Friday first. And so I uh, would just invite you to put one of those services on your calendar uh, to be able to be a part of that prior to Easter, and then, of course, we'll be here on Easter Sunday morning. Um, services are at regular times. Uh, lots of flowers are going to be adorning. If you would like to sponsor one of those, those Easter lilies, those forms are on, in the, on the narthex table uh, as you leave on the credenza, and you can sponsor that in honor or memory. I did want to start announcing this Sunday, too, that because Easter, uh, because we're having communion on Monday, Thursday, and on Easter Sunday, we're going to forego the first Sunday, which is the second, and have it offered on Thursday and, on, and the following Sunday on Easter Sunday. So lots coming up in the life of the church. 
uh, and hope that um, uh, as we go through our preaching series, which is simply entitled, you know, Good Enough, that those words speak into your life in a powerful way, um, and they really come to fruition during Holy Week, when we start to really understand the gravity of where we find ourselves in life and what God was willing to do for us through his son, Jesus Christ. I'm going to invite us to just be in a time of prayer together. Oh God, we live in a world that seems to have gone crazy and, and lost its way. And so we come, come to you this morning, not just seeking answers, but seeking strength, seeking courage for the days ahead. We pray for courage to be the people that you've called us to be, people who seek justice and peace through your love for all of your people. We struggle with questions that seem to have no answers and problems that have insurmountable solutions. We seem to be a deeply divided people. But as we look and listen to people around the world, they feel the same way, division, maybe by uh, a lack of ideology, cultural differences, and even war with one another, either through words or worse, through guns and killing. Surely we humans must test your patience, God, but we know that your love is all-encompassing, never-ending, always forgiving. This is our hope that you love us unconditionally. For we know and struggle with our imperfections, our shortcomings, know all, knowing all the while that in the end it is you who loves us the most above all others and is always there waiting for us. You are our hope for the world and it is this hope that we live and move and have our being. Today, oh God, we, we just ask your blessing upon those who are role models in our lives, teachers and coaches, grandparents, uncles, aunts, parents, Sunday school teachers, youth leaders. Give them patience and understanding, unconditional love for those to whom they are this role model. But we know that you are our guide and our strength. And you give it to us. All that you have and all that you are. And you love us more than any other. This morning we want to lift up those in our congregation. Who are sick and hurting in any way. We ask you to provide them peace and strength to face their situations. Give strength to the addicted. Comfort, it, comfort those who are victims of violence. Help us find ways to feed those who are hungry. But God, we also lift up those who are bullies, persons who are perpetrators of harm, those who feel the need to put others down through name calling and jokes. For these too need your love. Use people in their lives to show them a different path, one that is filled with goodness and hope. God, we ask you to help us be the change agents of this world. Give us courage to speak out about our faith, to teach those around us about your love for all people and to lead by example, showing and speaking with respect to others. In all things we, this, and, and in all these things we ask in your name, the Prince of Peace, who taught us to, his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Last night I lay a-sleeping, there came a dream so fair, 
I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, methought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. The gates were open wide, and all who would might enter, and no one was denied. No need of moon or stars by night or sun to shine by from the fifth chapter of Galatians, verses 1 through 2, 4 through 6, 13 through 15, from the message translation. Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. I am emphatic about this. 
The moment any one of you submits to circumcision or any other rule-keeping system, at the same moment, Christ's hard-won gift of freedom is squandered. I suspect you would never intend this, but this is what happens. When you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects, you are cut off from Christ. You fall out of grace. Meanwhile, we expectantly wait for a satisfying relationship with the Spirit. For in Christ, neither our most conscientious religion nor disregard of religion amounts to anything. What matters is something far more interior, faith expressed in love. It is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your own freedom. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love because that's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. If you bite and ravage each other, watch out. In no time at all, you will be annihilating each other. And where will your precious freedom be then? As humans, we crave rules. We see rules of nature all around us, and they soothe us. The Fibonacci sequence lived out in pine cones, the number of petals on a flower, shells, and spiral galaxies. To a certain extent, it is nice to know what the expectations are of any social gathering or situation. Do I use this fork? What is the normal dress code for an event like this? Will I be loud at this event or expected to use my inside voice? The rules around us help us to live with a certain amount of stability, the ability to avoid complete chaos. We humans tend to like things in proportion, with correct perspective, rhyme, and metric stanzas. Because complete free flow can feel like playing tennis without a net, although I might prefer that. But many would say, where are the boundaries? Chaos. There are many rules that give us comfort, but in the same breath, there are many rules we really dislike. There are many rules that are more of a burden than a relief. I recently heard of a concept called a shadow career out of the book Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield. The idea is that we end up living a version of something rather than the real thing. Pressfield is talking about doctors that can't spend enough time with patients to accurately diagnose and treat because the corporations they work for want them to bill a patient every seven and a half minutes. Or the teacher that can no longer be creative and has to watch every word they say to stick to the curriculum the overwhelming amount of paperwork and realizing that you are just trying to make it through each day and no longer really feel like you are making a difference in the lives of children, your real dream, shadow careers. It's like we sort of get to be what we really want to be or we sort of get to live out the passion we have in life, but not really. Too many rules. Freedom versus constraint. We long for both in our lives. Rules and constraints can help guide us, help us live communally, but freedom to live out our passions fully is important. Did you know that in Connecticut, a pickle fit for human consumption should bounce if dropped from a height of one foot? Or in Gainesville, Georgia, it is against the law to eat fried chicken with a knife and fork. (laughs) Or in Marion, Oregon, ministers can't eat garlic or onions before delivering a sermon. (laughs) Now, each of these laws feel completely absurd to us on some level. But I am sure that there is a story, a situation behind each one. Why were these rules created and actually turned into law? And why are they still on the books? 
Kate Bowler in Good Enough shares the story of a woman named Rachel that had been raised to believe that when you pray, you kneel. No exception. This rule over prayer was created so that we humans would be in a position of humility when talking to God. Rachel wasn't an accident in her adult life, suffering a burst appendix. She was laying alone at night, believing that she was going to die and really wanted to pray. To do so, she believed she had to climb off her gurney and kneel, but she couldn't. Her IVs and other equipment kept her from doing so. Rachel truly believed that she was going to die and that there was no way that God could hear her prayers. Which started out as a rule to help us be humble in prayer, turned into a scary and oppressive rule in Rachel's life. How many times have we created a rule or law with good intent only to have it end up not being flexible enough to cover every situation, and for many, for it to become more harmful than helpful. I think that a lot of us are shadow Christians. I think we like the idea of living like Christ did, filling the world with love, but we become overwhelmed with all the rules and rites and laws and rituals and theological language and All of that that is placed before us, is it a sin to dance, to drink, to curse? Do I have to be baptized by immersion or is sprinkling okay? As a baby, as an adult, will we definitely go to heaven even if we do it the wrong way, if it isn't done at all? A lot of folks look out at the world of Christianity portrayed in the movies and the media and books, maybe even something you have experienced personally and actually think that Christianity is going to ruin their life. No more fun for me. No more guilty pleasures. No more salty language for you, sir or ma'am. Oh, how this image is so untrue. Or should be. To be human is to be limited. And the most honest about that we are, the easier it will be to live out our Christianity fully. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to want to try and make it so that we are good enough. Our scripture today is profound. The Church of Galatia, an early Christian group, is struggling with what it means to be a real Christian. They are arguing with each other over which rules and expectations need to be met so that they will know they are living rightly and Christly. They are arguing about what food they should be eating, the clothes they should be wearing, the people they should be associating with, which apostle is better than the other, who is obeying all of the laws and rituals to the letter. And Paul comes in or writes them a letter, Galatians, and says hogwash. Now that's two sermons in a row where I got to use the term hogwash. Paul says Christ has come to set us free so that we can live a free life. To be free from all the oppressive rules and regulations, Paul is emphatic about this. Quit arguing about circumcision, which was originally used as a symbolic sign of belonging, but also a means of cleanliness and healthiness. Don't worry about that anymore. In fact, don't attempt to live any other rule-keeping system because it's not ultimately about the rules. It's about the freedom. Now, this said, he does say more. Paul says that, it's, that he suspects we don't intend for our own religions, plans, and projects to get in the way, but they do. They cut us off from the true spirit of Christ. We wait while following all the rules expectantly for a satisfying relationship with the Spirit. But we miss it because that relationship is not found in the overwhelming rules and laws. It is found in love. Faith is expressed in love. If what sets the boundaries in our lives are things that are loving versus unloving, we will find ourselves in a good place, mixed amounts of freedom and constraint. 
We have to be sure that we don't just do whatever we want, but we can live freely within the bounds of love. Does that mean I can occasionally use salty language? I guess if I mean it lovingly. (laughs) Even Jesus broke more than one Jewish law or custom to make the stranger or foreigner feel comfortable, to lovingly heal, to make another whole, even when he was supposed to be obeying Sabbath. He was loving when the world told him not to. There are lots of rules that we create for our own lives, and this can be beneficial, a way to love ourselves, setting boundaries. But just make sure that you haven't become so overwhelmed with your own customs and habits and boundaries that you forget to reevaluate and be open to more or something different. Make sure that what was once helpful in your life isn't now oppressive. Or maybe it doesn't fit with your new family, or good things can become a burden. Let me say that again. Good things can become a burden. And when you feel that weight, it is time to turn it over to God. Matthew 11, 29 through 30 says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. The world and its expectations can be heavy, but God says, Come to me. Do my work, love one another, and you will feel the lightness of this labor. Back when Matthew was written, you didn't just put any old yoke on any ox. Yokes were created for each ox so that the weight was distributed well, that sores didn't develop from gaps or wrong fits. The folks of the day did everything they could to take care of their oxen and make carrying their load as easy as possible. God wants this in our lives too. I don't want to be a shadow Christian because I feel that there are too many rules pushing me under. I want to rise up and live my faith out by being loving, making love the thing that helps me define every rule I put into my life that I willingly follow. I may not obey every rule, But I will ask myself, are these rules, the rules I live by, good enough? And if I can absolutely say that they are made out of love, then yes. Yes, they are good enough and I can continue to go about not being a shadow Christian, but the kind of disciple God asks me to be. And if that is good enough for God, then I believe it is good enough for me. Amen. Last Sunday night, uh, over 120 of us gathered together for a wonderful soup supper. Uh, We shared some uh, just tasty uh, paneer bread soup together. Got a chance to fellowship with one another. Very intergenerational. It was just a wonderful time to be together. And then as we were finishing eating, we moved into the heritage room where we put together uh, over 120 um, homeless kits. These are small kits put in like gallon bags, and they're uh, meant to be able to keep in your car with you so when you encounter uh, someone out on the street, you have a positive way in which to respond because each one of those had a food cart in with it as well. So uh, most all of the participants, uh, the, the families got to take some home depending on how many cars they had in their families, but we had some extra and that was the hope and, and expectation. And so those are going to be out in the narthex when you leave. If you want to take one or two, depending on how many cars you have in your household, you feel free to take those um, and then be able to respond appropriately if you find someone uh, at an intersection somewhere who might need some help. Uh, Our next uh, soup supper is going to be on April the 2nd. um, And afterwards, we're going to be doing another project together. We are going to be Pre-pack, we're going to be packaging all of the uh, eggs for the egg hunt that's going to be happening over at ECH, which stands for Every Child's Hope. Uh, We've been uh, involved in the the home there for decades, and uh, I know this is just one of the uh, things that the kids look forward to every time that Easter comes. So we're packaging 600 eggs, and then we're also going to be packaging the ones for our egg hunt that's going to be happening on Easter Sunday as well in between services. We should probably add that to the to make sure that people know we're having an egg hunt in between services. 
So uh, a lot of the eggs are going to have uh, scriptures, maybe an extra scripture inside of them so that when they open them, it's not just a piece of candy, but maybe a word of encouragement as well. So come and join us. It's on April the 2nd. Um, put that on your calendar first Sunday of April, uh, the night of Palm Sunday, so you can remember it that way as well, uh, and the Sunday before Easter Sunday. Um, it starts serving at 5.30, and let me see if I can remember the soup we're ordering. Chicken noodle, and, uh, broccoli cheddar is always a big hit, and creamy tomato. <laughs> so if that makes a difference, come and get some Panera Bread soup. Um, you know, as you think about how you'd like to support the mission and ministry that happens here at St. Paul's, you can always uh, drop some offering in the plates as you leave today. Go to www.sp4u.org. Or you can mail in a donation to, to the church at 5508 Telegraph Road. Just going to take a moment and pray over that offering that we're going to uh, receive this week. Uh, Lord God, it is one thing to memorize the words of Jesus. But it is another thing to let those words transform us and rearrange our priorities in our lives. So in these moments for quiet and reflection... What is it that God is inviting you to rearrange about your priorities? What is it that you want to offer to the church and to the world as a practice of God's love? And so we ask a blessing upon the offerings that we are going to receive this week. May it be pleasing in your sight. Amen and amen. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns all hopes. There is an ocean deeper than fear that tides rise.